I'm going to tell you which Auburn Tiger won the transfer window. And no, it's not a newcomer. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. And thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. The 45 days that the transfer window was open was very fun. Auburn added 12 guys. But I'm going to tell you which four Auburn Tigers I think stood out and won this transfer window. Yes, I'm leaving that a little open-ended because I'm going to go a few different directions with the four guys that I am going to mention. The player that I believe the Auburn player that I believe won the window as far as their stock is at a better spot now than it was at the start of the window is Jarquez Hunter. Auburn starting running back. Look, I think everything that happened in that 45-day window in some way benefited Jarquez Hunter. Obviously, adding three offensive linemen will do that. And we saw Jarquez Hunter be able to make plays against an average at best offensive line this past season. And at times, it almost seemed like he made plays behind that offensive line better than Tank Bigsby did. Oh, and also during that 45-day window, Tank Bigsby did declare for the NFL draft. So he is he is certainly the guy moving forward. But every offensive addition that happened, it's like it seemed like it happened in a way that would benefit Jarquez Hunter, which is good because I think Jarquez Hunter is going to be the guy that's really the centerpiece of this offense. And there's going to be a lot of talk about Robbie Ashford. There's going to be a lot of talk about if Auburn goes out and gets other quarterbacks after spring, whatever. All that can certainly happen. But Jarquez Hunter is going to be a big part of this team. That's not a hot take. It just is what it is. But adding Gunnar Britton, adding Avery Jones, and adding uh, Dylan Wade, we'll even, we'll even put a Xavier Miller. These offensive linemen, I think all four of those guys have a really, 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 really solid chance to start they're going to make Jarquez Hunter's life a lot better. And also, you bring in an offensive line coach that I just kind of have more faith in than the, the previous several that have been here uh, on the Plains. When you look at what Coach Thornton has done on the recruiting trail, you got to think he's going to continue to bring in talent. Heck, they may even add guys after spring just because they've really identified the fact that they felt like they needed a bunch of offensive linemen, which is great, which is obviously something that we needed. So I think Jarquez Hunter is going to be a huge part of this, and I think Jarquez Hunter was probably the biggest winner of the transfer window, which is funny. Um, But also, some of these guys, and, and we'll probably do guys whose stock fell over the window as well at some point, and a lot of it's going to have to do with, okay, who at that position you know came in? And it's interesting because... There was another running back that came in, Brian Batie. It's not Batty. Sorry, I've been saying his name wrong. Brian Batie, the, the South Florida back. You bring him in, but he's such a different style of runner from Jarquez Hunter. I'm not convinced that he's going to really lose that many snaps, even if Batty is a part of this. I think Batty could be a gadget guy. I think he's definitely going to be uh, a solid factor in special teams. He may be the starting kick returner, probably should be the starting kick returner as things sit currently in early January, mid-January. But I think Jarquez Hunter is the biggest winner of the transfer portal for the Auburn Tigers because of the offensive lineman that you bring in and then the running back that you brought in with Petit. I, I just don't think it's going to interfere a whole lot with Jarquez Hunter's total snaps. The Tiger that I believe uh, got second as far as his stock just increasing is Gunnar Britton. If you've listened to any show, any Locked On Auburn in the last month, you know how much I love Gunnar Britton, the former Western Kentucky offensive tackle. I think him coming to Auburn, he knows this, right? That's why he wanted to leave Western Kentucky. You got to think draft stock is on his mind. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, Zach, how many Auburn offensive linemen get drafted? Yeah, not many, not many. But the ones that sh- the ones that can play, they do. You look at Braden Smith. You look at Greg Robinson. Now, unfortunately, the list kind of stops there. But even even some guys that are kind of mid, like a like a uh, Jack Driscoll. I mean, if you can somewhat play offensive line, specifically offensive tackle at any school in the SEC, but specifically Auburn, just because we've seen it, you will get drafted. 
Another thing is Britain's going to be able to play at a higher weight this year than he did last season. I think it was Jason Caldwell that reported after talking to his father uh, about how he had an issue. I think it was like a tooth thing, so he couldn't eat as much, so he lost like 20 pounds. And so the the gutter Britain that we saw last year who played like a 1,000 snaps at Western Kentucky at a very, very high level, you're going to see him be a little bit bigger. Hopefully that allows him to be more impactful in the running game. And look, he was a left tackle at Western Kentucky, so he's got the passing down. They throw the ball a ton up there. And I just think when you look at what he's been able to do throughout his career, that natural step um, is going to be, look, he, he's all business. Yeah, I've talked folks, I've talked to folks close to the close to his camp. And the way they describe Gunner is he's just gonna be a dude that's in the facilities all day. He's gonna live, eat, sleep, everything that he does at Auburn. If he's not in class or studying, he's in the facility watching tape or working out or loving on his teammates because that's the kind of thing that he does. And I think Gunner Britton, in the span of these 45 days, uh, he's the winner in all of this. And look, I, I think him coming in makes the rest of the offensive line better. And look, you can have five good offensive linemen, but if they don't meld as a unit, it doesn't really matter. And so now you're able to have Dylan Wade play something not left tackle. You're able to possibly have Xavier Miller play either right tackle or maybe scoot him into right guard, depending on how you know the dynamic between him and Wade look like. You, know, you bring in the veteran center with Jones. There's just a lot to like about what Gunnar Britton brings to the table, making not only his career a little bit better, but I think the entire offensive line better. And that's only going to benefit him if um, when the NFL really watches his tape. And then also, you know, does he get on all SEC lists and things like that? Not that I think he cares about that, but still, the fans will. So Gunnar Britton, I, I believe, is a clear winner. A clear winner as far as winning that transfer window. The next guy on this list... I can hear it now. I'm going to get some pushback for. I'll tell you who. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. And also, we'll hear from Zeb Jasper, Auburn guard, recapping an incredible win over the LSU Tigers, also previewing their game against South Carolina tomorrow. That is coming up. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is the place where I go currently to check in on all of the sports betting action. As betaline.net is your number one source for all of your spets board, uh, sports, betting, info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get all the latest trends for every professional amateur league, NFL playoffs happening this weekend. Very, very exciting stuff. Really like the Cowboys. Really like the Cowboys over the Niners this week. I know, it's ridiculous, but I am pounding the Cowboys money line. Check it all out. Bet online. It's where the game starts. My third Auburn Tiger to win the transfer window. A guy that we have not mentioned a whole lot on this show. I've got Nehemiah Pritchett as a winner here. I think we're all in agreement that DJ James is the number one corner. I think Nehemiah Pritchett benefits from the fact that, look, I'm a Jalen Simpson truther. I am. Been like that for the last, like, 24 months. It's just part of my personality at this point. I'm really high on Jalen Simpson. And the fact that he excelled so much at safety... I think also helps Nehemiah Pritchett. But we heard Auburn talking to different defensive backs throughout the portal and never got to the point where they were serious enough for both of it to work out between Auburn and the player so they didn't add any transfer defensive backs. But I think if Auburn could have gotten a really solid corner, it would have hurt Nehemiah Pritchett's chances to be a starter consistently throughout the season. And this is me not saying I love I, I don't love Nehemiah Pritchett. I think Nehemiah Pritchett's great. I think he does things that other defensive backs on Auburn's roster um, can't do, which is great. He's got that elite speed. Uh, I think he's good close to the line of scrimmage. Hopefully that's how they use him more this year with his different defensive scheme. Ron Roberts is pretty aggressive. We'll see what that looks like at the defensive backfield. But I think them not bringing in a solid corner from elsewhere throughout college football makes Nehemiah Pritchett continue to be a starter. There's really no... I don't see a KN Lee coming in and like taking his job. You know what I mean? I, I just don't see anybody else challenging Nehemiah Pritchett for that corner spot unless they move Jalen Simpson back outside. But with what he did at the end of the season, I'm going to be really interested to see if they do that because I could just see him next to Kaufman in the backfield. It just looked good to me. It just did. So I've got Nehemiah Pritchett as a winner. I got a feeling I'm going to get some pushback on that. 
Let me know in the YouTube comments or in the Locked on Auburn Discord. Really, really interested to hear y'all's thoughts. All right, so at four, I'm going to skip to an honorable mention here because I actually had Dylan Brooks here. Sure, they brought in Elijah McAllister, but you can still make the argument that Dylan Brooks could beat out Elijah McAllister, the transfer edge from Vanderbilt. And I'd be totally cool with that. Like, okay, if that happened at the end of the spring and Dylan Brooks trotted out first in eight A, like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, is that what I'm predicting? No, but I think it makes sense. And just bringing in him, I think, is a win for Dylan Brooks because worst case, at least to start the season, unless Keldrick Falk, and Keldrick Falk may do this. Keldrick Falk may make that jump. Um, and also, I think you're going to see Elijah McAllister play strong side defensive end as well as that edge slash outside linebacker that they do in Ron Roberts' defense. But um, I didn't put him on the list just because I think we're leaping a little bit there. I think it's right, but I, 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 think, I think we're still kind of jumping through some hoops there. So for a similar reason, I've got Marcus Harris as the fourth Auburn Tiger that won in the transfer window. You bring in all these defensive line pieces around Marcus Harris, right? You got Lawrence Johnson, the Purdue defensive lineman. You've got Messiah Nasili Kite, who I think, you know, the guy from Maryland, I think he's going to be Marcus Harris's backup. And I'm just telling you, like, I think, think, think he's a space eater, but he's not better than Marcus Harris. He's just not. He's just not. And so you, you look at it, um, and I, I just don't see any type of competition when it comes to Marcus Harris's snaps. And I think the defensive line, I mean, we kind of mentioned this briefly with what the um, with what the offensive line is, like you can have four really good defensive linemen down there, but as far as getting sacks, I think sacks is a little bit overblown as far as a player. I think it's a team stat a lot of the times. And like Justin Rogers, the transfer, the former four star guy that spent some time at Kentucky, like that is a battle with Jason Jones. It's not a battle with Marcus Harris, and I just can't see. Um, I can't see Messiah coming in and just kind of taking a lot of snaps from Marcus Harris. I just don't see it when I watch his tape. Maybe on early downs, but I, you just want you want Marcus Harris in on early downs. So I, I don't know if I'm fully buying all of that. And so I think the defensive line as a unit got better. And I think it got better at spots where you're not really going to see any of those guys eat into Marcus Harris's snap count, nor should they. Because Marcus Harris is a stud. There were talks, I mean, about him considering going to the NFL, and I think he would have been drafted. I think he'll be drafted higher next year because I think he's primed for a really, really, really strong 2023 campaign. And I think he's really going to benefit from a first step and pass rush perspective because of what Ron Roberts brings. A lot of simulated pressure, a lot of kind of disguising blitzes or showing blitz and then actually not. And look, when you do that, these offensive linemen, they're constantly having to think. And I say this about college defensive backs all the time. The more you make people at the college level make decisions over and over and over and over again, if you make them make multiple decisions pre-snap every play, what are they going to do? They're eventually going to mess up. The more decisions a college athlete has to make, the more likely they're going to choose the wrong thing. And so if you're an interior offensive lineman and Marcus Harris is on your outside shoulder and you see Austin Keys or Demario Tollett or Cam Riley or Wesley Steiner, whoever it is, kind of creeping up, it's like, oh my goodness, do I need to block him? Do I need to mar block Marcus Harris? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a tempo situation. You don't have a whole lot of time to call checks at the line of scrimmage. Eventually, you're going to mess up and you're going to be intimidated by that backer, whether you pick them up, whether they're actually sitting the linebacker or not. You forget about Marcus Harris because maybe you don't communicate it to your tackle who's got to block Zakevius Walker or whoever, or, uh, you know, or Dylan Brooks or Keldrick Falk on the edge. And all of a sudden, Marcus Harris is potentially unblocked. I, I think this whole scenario is going to benefit a few of these guys up front. I think Marcus Harris is the biggest one. There's a chance it could be Dylan Brooks. Heck, there's a chance it could be the winner of the battle between Justin Rogers and Jason Jones. But in pass rushing situations, in big money downs on third down, I think guys like Marcus Harris are going to really be able to benefit from this. And so I think the way 
Auburn's transfer class kind of filled out these 12 guys as well as just the scheme that's behind it that Hugh Freeze brought in with Coach Roberts from Baylor. I think benefits him and I think benefits the Auburn Tigers. Let me know what you think. Comment in the uh, YouTube uh, YouTube comments down below or let me know in the Discord or on Twitter, whatever it may be. I um, think we can have some fun conversations there. Who do you think won the 45-day window now that it's closed on Wednesday? Coming up, Zep Jasper, Auburn guard. <laughs> just just stay tuned. I mean, he says some good stuff, and you know, I, I chime in with some, I think, decent questions. But he does, <laughs> he does a Yoan Treyor impersonation that's worth it. It's worth watching every bit of today's show. But before we get into our conversation with Zep, got to tell you about our friends at Built Bar. Do you remember falling in love for the first time? It's magical. You get butterflies. You think about him or her all the time. If you want to experience that again, eat a Built Bar. It's a protein bar that looks and tastes like a candy bar. It's 100%. Filled um, or covered in chocolate. It's delicious. Very high in protein, very low in calories. If you're like, well, Zach, I can't wait that long. I Sure, it's easy and convenient to go to built.com, but it's not instantaneous. They have fast shipping, but it's not instant. Well, I'll tell you what. They are now available at Walmart and at Sam's Club. I've had many of you, many of you, double digit amount of you reach out to me and say, hey, I went to my local Walmart and they were there sending me pictures of Built Bars, sending pictures of them hugging Built Bars. I don't need to see that, but I'm glad that you love your Built Bars. Check them all out at Sam's Club or Walmart or go to Built.com. Joining us now, Auburn guard Zepp Jasper. Zepp, as we record this Thursday afternoon, uh, you guys just getting back into the swing of things after returning from Baton Rouge. What an incredible win on the road. Double digits, you got to love that. But man, that, uh, that early three, uh, I'm sure once one of those goes in early, it, it's a nice feeling like, oh, man, it's going to be a good night. And it definitely was for you guys. Uh, well, it was it was a great night for the whole team. Um, yeah. You know, shout out to those guys like Lior coming in, stepping up, you know, uh, Alan Flanagan, you know, just starting the game off right. You know, we just started the game off with, you know, a great attitude. We know coming into this game that, you know, LSU had lost like their last two or three, mm -hmm. um, maybe so, but – um. We knew that LSU would want to be pumped to play us. I didn't really see a lot of fans in the crowd, but, you know, it was a great, you know, atmosphere just, you know, just being at LSU. That was my first time actually going to Baton Rouge. But um, we respect that team. We respect the coaching staff for the, um, their coaching staff. And um, we just had the mindset of we can't have no slip-ups. We have to come in here and win and take care of businesses, and that's what we did last night. Yeah, I mean, that LSU team, there's like nobody on the roster like not that long ago. I mean, the, the way that they've built that team pretty quickly. They came to conference play pretty hot, but yeah, it just hasn't gone that way once they started playing SEC teams. You mentioned Leor Berman. Uh, I mean, what stood out uh, about his play in your eyes? Zep? Well, you know, I've been knowing Leor since I got to Auburn, and one thing I know he don't lack, a, lack of is, is confidence. He ain't yeah. afraid of the moment. I know Leo, he'll get that ball, and he don't care if two people on him. He'll shoot that ball. I know you get in the ball, he's going he gonna to try to make something happen. Whether he turn the ball over, make a shot, that's one dude I know that's going to make something happen. You know, he, he just he's not afraid of the moment. He just don't care, and that's what yeah. I love about him. And last night, he showed that he wasn't afraid of the moment. He was happy to be out there. Um, every time I go sit on the bench with Leo on the sideline, he said, dang, I – I just want to get a, get a taste out there. I just want to get that feeling. Just give me, you know, just three minutes in, in, in the game, and I'll be fine with that. And I tell him, hey, you never know when you might get in, so just be ready. And Yeah, and, and you can tell Zepp when he's in, like, he's not holding anything back on both sides of the floor. I mean, defensively, yeah. the effort is just tremendous. Yeah. There's something to that, right, Zepp? We're like, man, even if it's three minutes, I'm going to give everything I've got for three minutes. Like, it, it, you can tell that in his play, and, boy, it, it paid off Wednesday night. No doubt. Uh, like I say, he's fearless. He's fearless when he gets the ball. So, you know, I know he'll be on guys' scouting report now because they're going to see how <laughs> well he played against yeah. LSU. So, um, you know, I was proud of him. I was proud of the team, um, proud of our coaching staff. Um, we came in that game and had business because, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they, they look at guys, oh, it's, they're not that good. 
Mm. You lose three games back to back, especially with being we us being one of the top teams in the SEC. So you would expect us to look down on a team, but we don't look down on the team because that's Murray State old coach. Um, and you know he's got a history of being good and bringing in yeah. great players. So no matter who we play, you know we always have to be focused on the outcome, and that's winning. Sure. Zepp, was there any kind of storyline going into it with like with with Yohan Treor was committed to LSU for a hot minute, then you know once their coach was let go, he kind of he kind of stepped away and ultimately chose to to play for Auburn. Was there any talk about that? Uh, any kind of chip on his shoulder or anything, or was that just kind of not really brought up? Well, that's a good question because uh, when we was warming up, you know, we both sat down. Um, in the game, like we both sat down, I, I asked him, I say, man, you supposed to have been here. <laughs> and he said, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he got a, you know, he, he got a French accent. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I, I supposed to have been here. So he said, I was like, well, look at the score. I know you glad you didn't come here, but I, I, I told him the truth. I said, I know you would have got more minutes at LSU, Yeah, but you would have been losing like that if, if, you would have been on the other side, but he was like, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm glad I came here. I'm glad I came here. So, you know, that was really what I asked him, but it really wasn't no big thing with yo, um, you know, coming to the game because his sure. mindset was just winning the game and getting back on the plane. Yo's a, a, a cool dude, one, mm -hmm. of, one of the guys I admire on the team, quiet, come from a different country. He's just one of those guys, like, you know, you always going to have his back because he, he don't bother nobody. He come – he come do his job each and every day. There's a lot of questions on, you know, the amount of minutes that we're seeing these freshmen play. You mentioned Yo, Trey Donaldson, uh, Chance Westry. A lot of people thought he had the chance to potentially be a starter or at least a key guy in the rotation. We haven't really seen that, Zep. Is there any frustration there? Or is it just, hey, you know, your time's not quite here yet? Do they understand well, that? Do they feel that? Give us, give us kind of a peek behind the curtain there. Well, it ain't no frustration. You know, the game could be too fast for some of them. You know, this ain't high school basketball. I know I know people looked at, you know, the summertime and said, oh, this is going to be this and that. But, you know, the summertime is different from regular season basketball. This is when everything is on you. The pressure is on you. You don't have nobody saying that to you. But now you're in the big league. This is the SEC. Mm -hmm. You've got to make things happen. Each game is going to be tough. And you don't want to put nobody in fire if they don't know what to do. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, you got a lot of pressure on you. You mess up. You make mistakes. Our head coach is Bruce Pearl. So, you know, he's a coach that motivates and he wants you to do good, you know, no matter what you're doing on the court. So it's like those guys understand that. So that's why you don't see a lot of frustration in them. But they understand the motto that, you know, it's guys ahead of you that's been here and done that, and they know what to do when the pressure does comes, when the game is tied 64-64. What are you going to do? We have we have people that's calm, collective, and, you know, it's, it's nothing because we didn't been in those moments. Those guys haven't been in that moment yet. And when those guys figure it out, those guys are going to be great. Zeb, you guys hit the road again, back-to-back -back road trips in the SEC. Absolutely brutal. Uh, you guys get home, you got to turn around and go back to South Carolina. That was on the road. But Zep, uh, that's a 2.30 tip. And the best place to watch that, unless you're making the trip to Columbia, which hopefully a lot of Auburn folks do. But if you're not able to, uh, you need to watch the game at Baumhauer's. It is the best place to, uh, to eat all kinds of food. They've got the best pizza in town, the best wings. You've mentioned their, uh, the, the, was it the breakfast burger with the fried egg that you like so much? Yeah, yeah, the, the shrimp, absolutely. I mean, they've got so many different things at Baumhauer's, and, and we've talked about it before. The service is incredible. Uh, you know it's going to be quick. You know it's going to be solid, and, and, and you're going to be treated you know, the way that you want to be treated, which is important to, uh, to, to both of us, mm -hmm. Zep. So um, be sure to check out our friends at Baumhauer's and go watch the game there uh, this Saturday as you guys, Zep, take on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Baumhauer's, uh, great partners with a lot of Auburn athletes as well as uh, as well as Locked on Auburn here. So be sure to uh, check them out. They are on off of the Bent Creek exit right when you get in to Auburn.
Zep, what stands out to you about the South Carolina team? They've really struggled in conference play with the exception of beating Kentucky, but I think they've like lost back-to-back games by like 30 or 40 points. So what's uh, what's standing out to you about the Gamecocks? Well, first, I want to talk about this. Uh, I was watching SEC Network yesterday. Okay. Uh, I think I heard one of the commentators say, I would watch out for Auburn losing this weekend against South Carolina. And in my head, I said, what? Come on, man. Ain't no way. We 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 didn't took every opponent seriously. Mm-hmm. You no know, matter their record, you know, a the exception of we lost against Georgia where we played bad. But we know South Carolina can play. We know they beat Kentucky. Sure. We're gonna prepare for them like they're the number one team in the country. It's no way that we can have slip ups. Mm-hmm. Gigi Jackson, South Carolina product, he's an NBA draft prospect. He's great. We're gonna treat him like he Kobe Bryant. We're gonna guard him. Have we gotta guard him? Whatever, he, whatever it say on the sky report, we're gonna do it. We're gonna come in that arena and play them tough, hard nose. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. And mm-hmm. I really ain't like that, but I haven't really told the team that. But you know, we're gonna come in there fired up. We're gonna come in there trying to win this game, especially the two thirty game. We getting yeah. on that plane and going home, and we make it back by five thirty. Come on now. Come on now, you can't tell me we ain't going to be pumped up for that game. Yeah, I mean, they've got talent. They just haven't really been able to to put it together. I was talking to some of my South Carolina contacts earlier today, Zep, and it's it seems like the, their self-diagnosed weakness is um, just around the basket. They're big men. They're front court. Um, what about a guy like Janai Broom maybe having another breakout game? Could you see it happening? Oh yeah, I can see I can see it happening because they don't got nobody in the paint to to, to stop guys like Janai Broom. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't got guys guys to stop guys like Jalen Williams. Um, so this would be two crucial games for them. Um, I know a couple of their guards, South Carolina product kids, and you know it's always a privilege to play against Auburn. You know, especially always being you know, over the past five years, Auburn being um, a top three, top two team in the in the conference at the yeah. SEC. So it's always good to to get high ranked teams coming to your coming into your arena. So, you know, we know that. We know that. Like we we haven't really got a, a taste of a big away game in, in the conference play yet. We haven't seen a, a lowest crowd yet. But who knows if we might see one Saturday. Who knows if students might wake up early to come to the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you'd get more of a more of a crowd with LSU and Ole Miss, but both of those crowds were pretty Tame, at least on the TV broadcast. Yeah, I also thought the same. I thought, you know, my first time being in LSU, with us bringing a 16 ranked team in the nation, mm-hmm. I, I, I at least thought we would get a, a big crowd at LSU. In my history of seeing LSU play, um, they always brought good crowds. Uh, maybe because it was on a weekday sure. and a lot of people, you know, couldn't get out of work. But, um, you know, hopefully moving forward, you know, um, over these next couple of games at the South Carolina game, you know, the, the schedule get tougher and tougher. So we got to start digging, mm-hmm. digging deeper and deeper into our bags and start going in because, you know, it ain't going to get easy. It's going to get harder. And when it get harder, you got to, you got to, you got to be together. You're right. not- Absolutely. Zep, thank you so much for your time as always, my friend, and uh, best of luck in South Carolina this weekend. Thank you. That's Zeb Jasper, as always. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. We will be back to have immediate reaction to the Auburn-South Carolina game happening tomorrow night. Until then, check out all of our written work at auburndaily.com. We'll see you then. This has been Locked on Auburn.